The anticipation of the hunt is the most incredible thing I've experienced in quite a while. But it came to a climax when I was getting ready for the shot. You know, a thousand things race through your mind. Everything is accumulation of thoughts. Basically set everything aside, blank everything out. This sheep hunt has been the adventure of a lifetime. It started over 30 years ago. Arizona implemented a bonus point system about 27 years ago, and it took me 27 years plus two additional bonus points to draw the tag. So it has been half of my life applying for a desert big horn in Arizona. Have you ever had that friend in your life where every time you tried to do something nice for him, he outdid you 10 to 1? Pat Romero's that guy. He is such a better friend to me than I've ever been to him, and it feels like every time I try to do something nice for him, he blows my mind with his kindness. When he drew this tag, the first thing he said to me is, we're going to film this hunt and we're going to put Diamond Outfitters on the Desert Bighorn Sheep Hunting map. And I thought, here's a guy who waited 29 years for this tag, and he should be totally selfish thinking only about himself. And his first thought was, Dan, we've got to film this for the best of the West. This is going to be epic. The best of the West has been privileged to film several hunting milestones with Pat's family over the years. From trophy bull elk hunts in Arizona with his wife and son to coos deer bucks in Mexico, Pat and his family are deadly when you get them behind a Huskama scope. Hermano, way to go. Heck of a shot, brother. Thank you, brother. What a neat deer. He's gonna look great on your wall with all your other giant coos, man. For this particular hunt, Pat selected my Best of the West 7 millimeter mag. And when he takes his animal, this will be the 70th animal taken with no wounded animals and no lost animals on this rifle in under five seasons of me filming with the Best of the West. That includes a lot of hunts for Diamond Outfitters clients in Arizona, hunts for myself in Colorado, throughout the Western United States. Texas Audad, and overseas in Ireland, Africa, Argentina, and more. Oh. Dropped him. Lights out. This rifle is starting to show signs of wear and tear. <laughs> Heck, so am I. But it still shoots true, and it still shoots deadly accurate every time. It's a neat rifle to have. It's one of the most versatile cartridges that we make. If you're looking to get in the long range game and don't know where to start, definitely take a look at that Best of the West 7mm mag. If you've never been on a sheep hunt, any kind of sheep hunt, especially here in Arizona, start, start applying. Sooner or later you're going to draw, just build your points. It's a, it's a point process. Because once you draw that tag, the adventure begins. It's an incredible adventure. I'm a, an instructor for Arizona Game and Fish, been an instructor for about 16 years, 17 years now. And I always tell the youngsters, there have been no better experiences or memories or friendships that I've developed over the numerous years I've hunted. And they have been lifelong friends. And that's, that's the beauty of hunting. So apply for desert bighorn, apply for deer, apply for any other species you can, and enjoy the great outdoors. We came to our Desert Bighorn Sheep Camp straight from Diamond Outfitters late season elk camp and we only had time that afternoon to set up camp and get out for an evening glass, but we were not disappointed. Within 15 minutes of getting to our glassing spot, we found a large group of Desert Bighorn Sheep, a few rams in the group with some lambs and ewes, and it's nice to see those lambs and those ewes running around, showing that the effort the Arizona Desert Bighorn Sheep Society has put into this mountain with the next generation of sheep. No rams that uh, we would be interested in for a hunt of this magnitude, but it was a great day nonetheless. Uh, not only did we see that first group of sheep, but we saw sheep in the distance that we knew in the coming days. We definitely need to get our eyes on some of those rams. But you just got that flavor. You were starting to pick up the aura of what the coming days would be like and just what a special tag we had in Pat's pocket, and we're just so privileged to be part of it.
The Best of the West is brought to you by The Wild Sheep Foundation Hunt and Fool The Best of the West Shooting Systems Defiance Custom Actions Hornady Accurate, Deadly, Dependable Huskama Optics and LongRangeStore.com Having made six pre-scouting trips to this unit, Pat has gotten to know the area quite well. Having put glass on over 100 sheep prior to opening day, Pat also knows what size of ram this unit is capable of producing. With the tag of a lifetime in his pocket, now it's just a matter of finding the ram of a lifetime to put it on. This unit is a phenomenal unit for, for desert bighorn sheep here in Arizona. Arizona Game and Fish has done an incredible job of excellent management for the habitat and for watering catchment programs here in this unit. Also, somebody has to be commended upon is the Arizona Desert Bighorn Society. In conjunction with Arizona Game and Fish, they provide a lot of funding and a lot of projects are coordinated through the Arizona Game and Fish and implemented here for excellent habitat. And that's a, that's a testament to the amount of sheep there in this specific unit. At the Wild Sheep Foundation banquet in Reno a couple years ago, my good friend Gray Thornton said, wild sheep don't pay for themselves. And nothing could be further from the truth. These animals need the help of sportsmen and sportswomen. And thanks to the efforts of the Desert Bighorn Sheep Society right here in Arizona and the Wild Sheep Foundation, 40 years ago, the first wave of sheep were transported into these mountains from Yuma. And today they thrive, making this one of the premier desert bighorn sheep hunts in the world. People often ask me at some of my speaking engagements and seminars around the country, hey Dan, I don't hunt, but I would like to be involved. What can I do? Well, simply by joining up as a member to the Wild Sheep Foundation or the Arizona Desert Bighorn Sheep Society, even if you never set foot into sheep country, you're helping conserve sheep and put and keep sheep on the mountain. With so much ground to cover, Pat is focusing on country he believes holds the biggest rams in the unit. Having spoken with fish and game biologists, as well as previous hunters of this unit, Pat is confident that he's putting himself in the best locations possible to harvest a fully mature ram. One of the keys to successfully finding these desert bighorn sheep is getting to the high spots with the high powered optics on a tripod. And usually what you would do is you'd find the highest, nastiest spire or cathedral rock and glass the base of it because it makes sense that they would be running around the fringes of that, of that rock. But on one particular morning, there was a ram actually in the spire. And I thought to myself, this is awful. We're certainly gonna see this ram fall to his death. But it was amazing. We watched him for several minutes and he barely ever lost his footing. And I'm talking about 80 degree type slope. I've never seen anything like it. Not in Alaska, not in Arizona, not overseas. These desert bighorn sheep are athletes and they're at the height of their game. And if you want a trophy ram on your wall, you better be ready. You know, one of the things that's so enjoyable about hunting multiple species of the North American slam of wild sheep is some of the legends whose footsteps you want to walk in whether it's Jack O'Connor or even Pat Romero, these animals hold a special place in the heart of all hunters and for so many hunters above all else. And being a coos deer guide and an elk guide and a sheep guide, until you've really spent a lot of time with a lot of different species, you may not get it. But I can tell you, I get it, Pat gets it. And if you've been out in sheep or goat country, you get it. A magnificent creature, a magnificent part of the world they live in. And once you've hunted sheep country, you are forever changed as a sportsman. Even if you've been hunting 20, 30, or 40 years, you'll never forget your first experience in sheep country. With only a couple more hours of daylight remaining, the crew makes their way down country to check one last spot for a band of rams known to frequent the area. From over a mile away, the guys glass up a couple of rams. From this distance, it's too far to determine age and too late to make a stock. Pat hoped to find a ram worth pursuing in the morning, but not knowing the age class of the rams makes the decision of where to go in the morning even harder.
with day three on the horizon, Pat has a couple options to choose from. With some younger rams already spotted, he could wait and see if any bigger rams show up. Good friend Doug White had this same tag a couple years ago and suggests to Pat the option of hiking into an area where he saw lots of good rams on his hunt. Confident in Doug's suggestion, Pat tells the guys to pack it up. Based on our second day hike, which was an incredible, incredible uh, 1100 vertical foot climb up into some really good glassing country, we were facing a mountain that Doug had identified as a mountain that although we could only see one side of it, if we didn't see any of the rams we were looking for on our side, that it would be worth a closer look in the, in the coming days. So on day three or four, we made that journey a beautiful, beautiful 45 minute drive in the side-by-sides, just a true journey. Uh, just being out here driving in sheep country and side-by-sides is a lot of fun on its own right. And we started to get to glassing spots right at daybreak. Right away we were picking up sheep, rams, chasing ewes. Um, again, nothing that we wanted, but also giving us that continuance of that process where we're looking at a lot of different sheep, comparing notes. And as we kind of went along to a next glassing spot after next glassing spot, we were able to see sheep at almost every location. And it wasn't until the last spot we decided that, hey, this is where we're going to make our stand for the day. We're going to do a big hike in here. There'd be a big vertical climb at the end of going through a canyon mouth. And that once we got to the top, we'd be able to glass continuously for miles and miles. And we were about an hour into that hike, come up a little bit of a ridge, and the coos deer guide and me kind of took over. And I said to Pat, you know, are we really going to leave this mouth of the canyon without glassing it? And right away, Pat said, no, we, we need to glass this. So we set up, and, and in less than two minutes, you know, Pat found a band of rams bedded down. And, you know, selfishly, I wanted to be the one that glassed Pat's rams so bad I could taste it. But as soon as he said, hey, I've got some sheep, I've got some rams, I could tell in his voice that there was something different about this particular band of rams. And, of course, that got me pretty excited. So we started setting up. We got the optics on the tripod, which is so critical for trying to determine the size of a mature ram. And uh, there they were, bedded down in all their glory, perfect sun, perfect hunting light, perfect camera light, just a perfect morning. And uh, these rams were bedded down, chewing their cud, just doing what they do. There's, I believe, 10 of them in the band. And there we are, you know, taking notes, looking at them, comparing them at about a quarter mile away. Pat got himself in position, and we only fortunately had to wait about 15, 20 minutes till those rams stood up and started feeding around. And there was clearly a giant amongst giants, one that really stood head and shoulders above the rest. And you could just see in Pat's body language, having known him as long as I have, that he was in, I mean, business mode. And uh, as he started to get himself in a position and the ram separated himself from the rest of the group, um, my camera operator T said, hey, let me know if you're going to shoot. And there was no response from Pat. And T knew and I knew in that moment that Pat was ready to take this ram. And he had picked the one. We could all see the one. He asked us for the range, and Gabe and I confirmed 475, 476, 477. With every step, triple check the range. And he just touched it off. The Best of the West is brought to you by the Wild Sheep Foundation, Hunt and Fool, The Best of the West Shooting Systems, Defiance Custom Actions, Hornady, Accurate, Deadly, Dependable, Huskama Optics, and LongRangeStore.com. For information about guided desert bighorn sheep hunts in Arizona, please contact Dan Adler at 520-730-8147 or online at www.diamondoutfitters.com. For more information about the products and gear used on today's show, please visit longrangestore.com or call 1-866-754-7618. So when the moment came, I was just able to basically set everything aside, blank everything out, and just concentrated on the shot, concentrated on the beautiful animal, and everything came together and I was able to do that. Down, nope, not yet. Down. No. Down, stay on, Pat. I hope that was the biggest one. Great hit. Perfect hit. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah, he's dead. He's dead. I think so. Oh my god, you did so good. You did so good. It's a lifetime green, man. It's not done. I don't know what we got. <laughs> oh my nice god. Shot. A great shot. A great conclusion to an epic hunt. A once in a lifetime tag. And I'm just so honored that I could have been a part of it. You know, the only thing harder than having a desert bighorn sheep tag is having a camera crew follow you around while hunting desert bighorn sheep and to have the patience and the timing and the understanding of what it would take to put together an episode worthy of a hunt like this was going to take patience from him and time and Pat was completely unselfish the whole way and this episode is a tribute to his legacy and it's a tribute to the Arizona Desert Bighorn Sheep Society, the Wild Sheep Foundation, Pat Romero and the legacy to his family. Pat, on behalf of everybody at the Best of the West and Huskama Optics, and as your friend, thank you for letting us be part of this. We got to wrap me off. You're next. Holy <laughs> shit, man. Son, son, <laughs> I waited for you to get here. I waited for you to get here, son. Hold on, hold on, hold on, man. I know, man, I know you've been passing those guys up all day. Like, the whole time you've been here, you've been passing them up. <laughs> good shot, good shot, man. Awesome. When my son was six months old, I was fortunate enough to have drawn a uh, coos stag, a December tag in southern Arizona. I can still remember taking him hunting the first time ever. He was six months old, wrapping him up in a blanket, putting him in a pack frame, taking him out with my wife. And we had an, an amazing time. And from there, the experiences of him going hunting with me are just tenfold. It's just a beautiful, it's been a, been a beautiful journey, beautiful memories with my son. My son is now an adult. He's a 25-year-old young man, loves hunting, loves the outdoors. And he was fortunate enough to leave work early on, on uh, Saturday, was going to be here uh, Sunday and Monday. And I, I kept thinking, wouldn't it be awesome if, if my son were here when I, when I harvested my, my desert bighorn? He was not in my group, but he was, he was away a few hundred yards away, just, just, just enjoying as much as I, as I was. As, as we approached the, the ram, he was right by my side hugging me and just we were hugging each other just just showing just 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 the love you have for your kids it was just incredible the the neatest experience is walking up to a trophy of a lifetime the build-up the build-up the anxiety the excitement the joy the everything it, there was just too many emotions going all at once it was incredible and as I got closer to it closer to it some of my friends were already probably 50 yards from, from the trophy, from the animal, from the desert bighorn. However, they never approach it, they never touch it out of respect for the animal and for me. That's a sign of true friendships. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> After I approached my beautiful desert bighorn sheep, the picture taking process begun. And there, there must have been 500 pictures taken of the animal, myself, my friends, everything. It was just an incredible, incredible journey. I wish everybody could go what I went through, the whole process from applying, building up the points, drawing the tag, the anticipation of the scouting, the anticipation of the hunt, the anticipation of setting up camp, the camaraderie, the friends, the joy, the laughter, the happiness. It was just an incredible, incredible hunt. When one thinks of the pinnacle of North American hunting, the desert bighorn sheep has to be at the top of the list. And today, on a beautiful December Arizona day, in front of his son and six friends, Pat Romero just took a giant Arizona old warrior ram. I couldn't be more proud to call Pat a friend, more like family, and I can't be more excited that his son was here to see this and another half dozen people at camp. A total team effort, just under 500 yards across a canyon Hermano, you did it. Congratulations. Couldn't be happier for you. You'd well deserved. Dan and I have been friends for a long time. We met 15, 16, 17, I don't know how many years ago. We've been a lot friends for a long time. I want to thank Dan, Dan Adler from Diamond Outfitters. And the list is long of all the friends. I wish I had time to list all the friends that, that helped me out on this hunt. I can just say Doug White helped me out. Uh, Gabe Ruiz helped me out. My friend from New Mexico, we've been friends for 30 some years. He flew through Phoenix from, from New Mexico to be on this hunt. 
Mark Swift, another great friend of mine. I've known him for 30 some years. I just, it was just an amazing experience, but the best part of it all was my son being here. We loaded up all the hide in the head, put it on my backpack. And just as I was getting ready to gather other things, he told one of my other friends, he said, I'll take it. He strapped on the pack and my son, My son, being the strong young man, young man that he is, carried out my, my, the head and the cape of this beautiful desert big horseshoe.